Hey everyone, welcome once again to the Immortality Podcast. As usual, I'm your host, Jake, here with Josh. Hello, everyone. So today we have uh, something some of you may have heard of before. It's it's a Chinese black tea. It's it's pretty popular, um, pretty newly popular in a sp- the specialty tea world. It's called Jinjin Mei, or Golden Eyebrows. Uh, it's pretty unique. So let me let me just uh, kind of get us started here. I'm just gonna do the kind of the regular preheat of the teaware, and then we can take a look at the leaves here. Which Josh, let me know what you what looks distinct about these to you. Oh. Quiz quiz time. This time, what's uh, oh man? What's different about what's unique about this? It looks like there's all these white hairs that are just wrapped around the actual mm-hmm. tea bud or the mm. tea flower. So, so, so you're right. It's 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 the bud. It, this this tea is all bud. So no no stem, no leaf, just just the early spring pluck of of the tea bud. Um. So give that a smell. Jinjun Mei is quite fantastic. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It, 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 People go crazy for this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The sweetness. This is one of those teas when you look at it, you don't expect it to taste mm-hmm. like this. Mm-hmm. Like this specific ginger may. Mm-hmm. I, it's almost a, a catch 22. How is this flavor produced from this tea leaf? Yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to say exactly. I mean, you know, I, I will tell you like what's unique about it. You know, it's, it's a black tea, obviously. So historically, um, you know, Lapsang Suchong, right? That, that this 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 is from the Wuyi area. So we had a lot of oolongs uh, on the program from the Wuyi Mountains. We had one black. We had the smoked Lapsang on a few episodes ago. Those ones are pretty much all, um, you know, leaves and buds, or just leaves. Those ones are pretty much all leaves and stems, or just leaves. This one is entirely buds. So like a silver needle, you know, also is like a, another tea that's like all buds. Um, this is that, but just uh, black. So I'm not gonna rinse the leaves. We're just gonna drink the first steep. It doesn't. It doesn't need a rinse. It's not like roasted. It's not uh, rolled. Uh, and it's pretty. It's pretty strong. You know. It's. It, it's. It's delicate in, in, in a way. But you know, the the oxidation of it, it being a black tea will kind of give it a little more hardiness. So aroma wise, I don't know. Malt, honey, pine. Some floral elements, some like some fruit. I drunk this one, and this is gonna make me sound cooler than I really am because I'm not this cool. I do another podcast, Uh and on that podcast we were drinking tea, and I was interviewing a National Geographic photographer Uh who his specialty is like caribou, polar bears, Arctic regions. Mm -hmm. He's been able to witness climate change, and he's been all through Asia. And he requested we drink this tea. Oh, interesting. And he was very impressed with it. Yeah. You know, someone who had traveled the world and, and he was like, that's a very, very good you had, tea. You had the Trident tea? Yeah. The yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I brought this version of nice. Jinjin Mei, but it was probably last year or the year before. Sure. And that's when I learned about just this tea. Yeah. I, it kind of blew my so, mind. So it was, yeah, it's it's a, again, it, it, it's, 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 it's a new development. I, I think like 2006 is when this tea was like formally invented. It's like drinking like honey. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I always find the body to be fairly surprising. It's it's very thick, like in a, in, a, in a sense, like kind of pillowy. Yeah, it is. Um, it I, expands, and I guess that has to do with like kind of like the, the the downy hairs on the buds, like those kind of come off and get and get in the cup. That would be like my guess as to like what's part of it. It's part of that texture. What I like is when you get to the end of the cup, you can see whatever white hairs Mm -hmm. have come off and they're just at the bottom of the cup and I drink those white hairs. I don't know why I'm like, give me those. Oh my gosh. Tell me more about this Jinjin Mei. I mean, wow. Jinjin Mei mostly comes from a Tongmuguan village um, in Fujian. Uh, I think this particular one was harvested a little, little higher up the mountain than that one. So a little higher elevation than the main village. Again, uh, Wuyi has a pretty like distinct, place in tea history of course the famous wu yi oolongs of which you know we've had several on the program so far those come from wu yi also uh historically this is historically uh wu yi is the origin of black tea of course lop song suchong being the original uh black tea which was you know exported to europe and because black teas made the journey across seas better than green teas that's why the west drink drinks black tea and Historically, uh, China drinks green tea and oolong. 
but that's that's kind of changing recently um partly as a result of this tea this this tea like really really caught on after it was introduced and that, and it's kind of started a new interest in china of in black teas really yeah yeah so so china, china actually drinks a lot more black tea than it did a few years ago so even with the tea traditions of lobsong Lopsong has historically more exported, more of an export. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it, it has like a following. It always, always had a bit of a following in China, especially the people who produced it drank it. But um, but by and large, yeah, Ch- China drank almost entirely green tea until like you know, a few years ago. What other teas that are on the Trident Cafe website are similar to this genre? Because like, I'm tasting the Lopsong mm-hmm. that we had. I'm tasting a little bit of the Chinese blacks. Yeah, you know, that are up there, and yeah. So I'm curious, what other teas are similar to um, this? So obviously, the uh, we we have a we have a few different Wu Yi blacks. There, the the other ones besides this are Lop songs. So that so same area, you know, black tea making, but um, you know, leaves, buds, and stems, not just buds. Which you know, I think as we saw in the tea Guan Yin episode a, a couple episodes back, um, how much of a difference plucking standard makes, uh, just to remind everyone, we talked about how t- the Tiguan Yin didn't have any stems and how it made it taste so much different than a Taiwanese oolong, which generally have big burly stems in them. So I just want to emphasize, yeah, again, how uh, much of a difference plucking makes here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this, this is really nice, right? Like like really, really malty, uh, piney, honey, I don't know, fruit, fruit along the lines of like, what, maybe like dry apricots or something. Yeah, definitely like a dried stone fruit of some kind. Something like you're like prunes or something. Dates. Yeah, prunes, dates. Yeah, I definitely like the dates. Yeah. It's like a date and an apricot had a baby. Yeah, yeah, I think so. A, <laughs> yeah, an apridate or something. Yeah, yeah. apridate. Dried apridate. Date precot. I will not be writing that on the website as a description. <laughs> date date precot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes what, like, oh yeah, little, little thing I wrote down here. It takes 60 to 80,000 tea buds to produce 500 grams of this tea. <laughs> Dang. So ba- ba- basically, all of Tong Buguan is now in the last few years because this tea got so popular both domestically and internationally. Um, basically, all of Tong Buguan grows ginger May now, and even like areas outside it grow ginger May. Uh, to, to, to go back to other teas that are similar to this, we have the other uh, Chinese blacks, which I think, you know, s- similar ish. Nothing's quite like this. We did recently get. A Nepali black, which is all buds, so in the style of a ginger may, which is really interesting. It's the same style of tea, but grown in Nepal, not Fujian. Oh wow! Uh, so it's it's like this plus like I don't know, kind of a Darjeeling. Oh wow! And then yeah. it's got all that elevation from Nepal, probably. Yeah, I think the tea uh, making skills aren't quite there as uh, aren't quite as there as in China. I'm not trying to you know knock Nepali tea makers. They do a very good job and work very hard, but the tea tradition in China just stretches back generations farther than the tea traditions in Nepal. All Jinjun maize, or I like the translation. Golden eyebrows. Yeah, golden yeah, bushy yeah. eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always add the bushy. There are different quality varieties, right? Because I've seen yeah. a, a couple different qualities where the leaves were bigger and the buds seemed to be bigger, but there were still all the white hairs. Mm-hmm. But this one... The buds are, you know, maybe the size of your pinky nail. Well, or this, like... the, the, this is an early spring pluck. I think, it, I think okay. it was, I think it was April first of this year is is what I have. Um, that it was harvested, um, and you know, there's a lot of. Anytime a tea becomes popular, you get a lot of copies, right? Because people are trying to cash in on the success of the tea, and sometimes the copies are good. You know, sometimes it's like fine, like it's 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 also a great tea. So, sometimes it's, sometimes not so much. Um, so I think it's you know very easy to like. Take any old black tea, take the take the buds and sell it as ginger may. Okay, that makes sense. But but, but this but this is from Wu Shan, so it's real ginger may. So just using that as a qualifier for all the listeners and all the watchers, you know, checking from that it's from Wu Yi Shan will really, you know, make sure that it, it is a real ginger may. Yeah, I mean just just know your sourcing, that's all that's all I'm saying. You know, only only buy from reputable dealers. Um you know, and then it turns, like it turns into this honey thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's evolving. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Or, or it's oh, wow, like that's really good, actually. It almost tastes like a a black tea, but way better. Like, mm. almost some... like a Western black tea, but but way better and not. 
I don't know. It's just next oh, level. Le- lychee. I'm, I'm tasting lychee on this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I lychee, I don't, I don't, long I don't, gone. I, I'm not even sure that was there before, was it? Or was that just not? No, okay. no. But it might have been there in its its pininess. Yeah. Or, I don't know if it was piney, but... It's more fragrant now. I thought that, I thought it was yeah. a floral flavor, but I think it's I think it's yeah li- lychee or long gone like one of those stinky Chinese fruits. The fruit is definitely coming out. Yeah, maybe a little mango steam. This, this one's just this one's just like mouth smacking. <laughs> it just makes you want to go like. This is a nice, nice you know treat. What's funny is I have about an ounce of this left, mm-hmm. and I and I just realized I need to get mm-hmm. more of it. <laughs> well, yeah. Buy more tea. Yeah, totally lychee. Mm-hmm. Lychee, long gone, mm-hmm. and like somewhere there at the very end aftertaste, you can kind of see why it's classified as a black mm-hmm. tea, or you can feel that kind of black tea that's well, been it, oxidized. It is a black tea. I mean, black tea just refers to like oxidation. Yeah, but it's 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 very different. Like, and that's just because basically no one thought to just do an all bud plucking and make it into black tea before before this. Yeah, the sweetness is unparalleled. So this, so this just goes to show, I think, like what an evolving tradition tea still is. You know, it's not just some like ancient thing. Like it's not just like a fixed tradition. Like we're drinking these like teas that are like hundreds of years old. I mean, you know, there there is that, and it's beautiful. But like, there's a lot of there's a lot of innovation going on these days. Um, and every now and then, something like this will like really catch on. But you know, like everyone's doing everything now. Like farmers in Darjeeling are making oolongs. Like people are pressing Dragon Well. Like there's like all kinds of crazy shit happening. Which is cool, I think, because it's, you know, yeah. you're using the processing techniques. Mm. And then because all these tea cultivars are grown in different parts of the world now, thanks yeah. to human migration, yeah. we can kind of fuse the tea knowledge and kind of yeah. take a cultivar that wasn't processed that, you know, mm. the way of a high mountain yeah. oolong and then do the high mountain oolong or the first flush Darjeeling. Or yeah, the, and, a, and a, lot, a lot of them you just taste them and you're like, oh yeah, that's interesting, I can taste it. But every now and then, yeah, you, you get something like really special. Yeah, this is one of those really special moments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So with the ginger and may, are they making it for export or they're just noticing there's a market for it? So just... I think I think this is consumed domestically more than it is exported. Um, it's, wow. yeah, the thing about like tea, like it's about Chinese tea, you know, Ch- China's not like a developing nation, right? Like it's... It's not like it's a, a lot of like in, in coffee, you know, it's like most of their crops are exports. And like, you know, some tea countries are like that. Like India exports quite a bit of its tea. Certainly the African tea growing countries export most of their tea. But China, you know, mo- most tea growing in China is grown for the Chinese people. So it can be a little challenging getting like the really good stuff out of China. So in a way, this is this is the tea secret. And sometimes yeah. the Chinese just don't want you to know about their secrets. Yeah, and that's that's true. That's actually, that's yeah, actually no, true. That's a, that's a real thing, guys. Yeah. My Tai Chi teacher tells me often, they don't want you to know about the secrets. Yeah. Well, why would you? <laughs> why, 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 why would they? Yeah, no, 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 seriously. It doesn't traditionally work out when you tell people the secrets. Yeah. This is fabulous. Mm-hmm. I mean... It's a really good black tea. It's really unique. It's... Yeah, it almost transcends the black tea thing Mm -hmm. because of the buds and the sweetness. I mean, that's what Mm -hmm. shocks me is Mm -hmm. like the undertone of sweetness that really gives it this malty caramel, not Mm -hmm. caramel, but malty honey. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely this like honey thickness to the liquor, Mm -hmm. the tea liqueur. And I just like drinking the white hairs at the very end. (laughs) Yeah. Those are just the downy um, hairs on the buds. Uh, I believe trichomes right is that the right word oh yeah trichomes, trichomes. they're trichomes. totally called tea, trichomes. tea trichomes, tea trichomes. <laughs> before there were cannabis trichomes there <laughs> were tea trichomes <laughs> that's how you know it's good <laughs> yeah and the cannabis and the tea trichomes used to play together mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. oh it's like really still very fruity yeah it's like the sweetness is calming down and the fruit is coming out yeah the maltiness too mm-hmm it's like uh, the sweetness, the maltiness is coming up, the mm. fruit neatness. Yeah, so this one's enduring surprisingly well. That was that was steep five. I'm I'm pretty sure. Um, so so this one's this one's always very popular. Uh, it goes pretty fast. Uh, you know, we had the tea one in on a couple episodes ago. I, I think we called that a very approachable tea. I, I feel like this is pretty approachable too. Like there's there, there's a lot to like about it, even if you haven't really really developed too much of a palate for tea. Yeah, and I think if this tea because it's so approachable. I think if you tried it for the first time, not as a big tea drinker, 
it it would turn you into a tea drinker. Mm-hmm. You know, we have these stereotypical views of what we think tea can do and taste like. Mm-hmm. This one, just it's, like the Ti Kuan Yin, yeah. steps out of it. Well, it's surprising. I think it's surprising to a lot of people. Yeah, and then the Japanese one we did, same thing. Mm-hmm. It's like all the teas that we're we're drinking here really, really take this to the next level. Mm-hmm. But this one is approachable. Mm-hmm. Like I could give this to my mom or my stepdad, who are mainly coffee drinkers, and they would be like, "What is that? And why do I like it?" Yeah, and I think I think a lot of that has to do with the body. You know, it's 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 got a it's got a really good body. Um, it has a has a lot of sweetness. Um, and I think it has like a lot to like pe- pe- people like, you know, people in the like in the West still like malt flavors. They like fruit flavors. They like pine flavors. You know, that's like, it's, there's nothing weird. I'm not, I'm not writing. It's not one of those like teas that tastes like old books or something like that. Well, and even what you were saying about the malty flavors, I feel like people who maybe like their whiskey sure. would yeah. like this yeah. because it's got this, that's this point. malty flavor, but also this undertone sweetness you know, without the burn of an alcohol, yeah. but it's got that aged, yeah. aged kind of whiskey feel to it, or like oak barrel feel. I don't know what. Yeah, a little like bourbon barrel, maybe. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, way more bourbon barrel. God, I gotta write that. As, I, I have to. I have to revisit my tasting notes on this one. We we just we just got like way better tasting notes than what I wrote a, long, a while ago. This one definitely. I didn't expect it to be this. And then bourbon I, barrel lychee, <laughs> like. Lychee bourbon barrel, yeah. lychee bourbon barrel. Yeah, <laughs> with a date apricot. Date, date apricot. Okay, well, I'm, I'm gonna leave date apricot out. <laughs> yeah. Date hyphen apricot. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Really, really good. How much of this did you get? And then how long do you uh, think this will be around for? That's a good question. Uh, we we got a, we got a fair bit. This one's this one's popular. Um, it's it's still it goes it does go pretty fast. Uh, I I wouldn't sleep on this one either you know especially because it's like one of the more approachable ones they they tend to go a little faster do you, do you have a couple different grades of this one or uh, just, just this discord? one just this one we have we have a lot of we have uh, i think three other different varietals of lop song or four, four actually we, we have four different other kinds of lop song including the smoked lop song um i so really like that smoked all, lop all, song. all from all from the same area the smoked lop song is great that's what we tried on the podcast right the yeah we, we had the smoked on here yeah earlier. yeah oh, that yeah. one with the with the traditional smoking, yeah. Yeah, I basically have a tea list for what I need to buy. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you're living life on planet Earth, why not drink the best that the Earth has to offer? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, in a way, we're we are drinking the Earth yeah. because the tea plant has quite geniusly broken down the mountain or the the land where it's grown and turned all that Earth nutrients into. You know, leaves and well, flavor. And yeah, really, really in the West, the secrets don't out on tea, right? We were talking about like the Chinese secrets, but like, you know, a lot of people don't really know what good tea is or how to brew it. But you know, what's, what's, what's important, what I always tell people, what, what's important about tea is like, you know, knowing where it comes from, knowing when it was harvested, like when, knowing when it comes from too, because you, you know, a lot of teas you don't want to like buy old, but, but you know, some, someone's still going to sell you like last year's green tea. You don't want that. I would never sell you last year's green tea. Well, I might at a discount, but at a discount. But I mean, usually that, you know. And I'll tell you what it is, too. Well, and like, usually what happens, and this is what I've noticed, uh-huh. with the Trident Cafe mm-hmm. and the tea, because the tea that you're buying and importing goes to the coffee shop mm-hmm. so that all of the customers every day and every week get the freshest tea from around the world. Yeah, they do. And then the they do. extra basically goes to the website. Yeah. And so the tea never sits around for very long. We we have a pretty unique model, yeah. Oh yeah, it's basically here today, gone tomorrow, mm-hmm. and it, and it won't come back. Mm-hmm. You know, it's limited supply, well, high quality. So sometimes it goes the other way. Sometimes the tea goes online first and sells it online before it ever gets to the cafe. Nice, nice, yeah. good job, online tea store. But yeah, you know, n- n- knowing when and when and where your tea comes from, making sure it comes from a reliable source. Knowing what you're drinking, uh, knowing what you like, and knowing how to brew it. These are like the important things that like, you know, 99% of people in the U.S. don't know. We do our best here to try to educate people and steer them towards good tea. Like, But, you know, really, at the end of the day, it's on the consumer to be out there on the front lines drinking tea with us, you know. And really, we just want you to have 
the best cup of tea on planet Earth. Yeah. Who I'd recommend this one to? Yeah, I think I think it's approachable. It's also it's also unique. So I think I think someone kind of like getting into special level tea this this would be good for. But also if you like kind of the style of tea, the 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 heavy kind of the heavy kind of style, big fruit, big flavor. If if like that's your speed, it's not really. It's yeah. And again, it's not a traditional tea either. It's 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 new, but it's it's something that like is is very highly regarded just in the short amount of time it's uh, been around. You know what's interesting is. I'm I'm probably going to buy some and use it at family gatherings yeah. this holiday season. Yeah, exactly. Because exactly. It, it, if you have a group gathering or a potluck or a mm-hmm. dinner and and you really want to give a nice gift yeah. of like something that people can try as an experience. Oh, it's great. Yeah. This is a great gift to bring to a potluck or or a gathering yeah. and after the meal when it's tea time or even before a meal. Mm-hmm. Cuz I mean this one really gently starts starts the uh, metabolism mm-hmm. up and just share this with your friends. And then I'd say, you know, when you're home alone at night on a cold mm-hmm. winter's evening mm-hmm. or a cold fall. Seven steep, still really good. I feel like it's got the malty, malty sweetness. Yeah, this one's surprisingly hearty to me, actually. It must just be the uh, good growing conditions. That would be my, my guess on that. High mountain, kind of kind of tough leaves. So you can find this tea and others like it uh, either in the shop on Pearl Street in Boulder or online at tridentcafe.com slash teas. Um, again, you know, I don't know how long this one's going to be around for. It usually goes fairly fast, so don't sleep on it. I slept on it last year, yeah. and I was very, very kind of a little bit salty. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't let that happen to you guys. Yeah, don't, don't. Okay, well, everyone, thanks again for joining us. As always, I'm your host, Jake, here with Josh. I hope you have a great tea drinking experience. Jake and I hope all of your teas are excellent. We hope you find the tea of your dreams. 